on the Football New South Wales YouTube page via the live type. We're at beautiful Western Sydney, Blacktown Football Park in Rooting Hill for Blacktown Spartans versus RPL Leichhardt, round seven of the NPL Women's New South Wales competition for the 2024 season. Eric Subihanu here on the mic, live from the media box here at Blacktown Football Park. Absolutely delighted to be here today and looking forward to another great game for the women's top tier competition in New South Wales. So we just have about not enough time, I think, to run you through the two starting lineups. Firstly, for the Spartans in their usual orange. Number one, Anna Norton. We're expecting a back four, so from left to right, number 26, Diana Carono. Number two, the captain, Chantel Maniti. Number 17, Brittany Duggan. And number three, Charlotte Owen. Three in midfield for Spartans, number 12, Charlotte Carroll. Number eight, Helena Daniela. And number 11, Kitwal Mkali. And three up front, number 12, sorry, number 28, Alyssa McKenzie. Number 22, Kiani Latham. And number 27, Alyssa Ansad. While for RPL Leichhardt, the visitors in their traditional colours, the maroon jerseys, the sky blue, and the sky blue shorts, their starting lineup is as follows. In goal, number one, Sophie Margus. They're back four from left to right. Number 21, Caitlin Kaparazov. Number five, Teal Kilbride. Number 24, Charlotte Young, the captain. And at number three, Tanya Barazio. Three in midfield, number 16, Estelle Fregale, number 17, Mona Walker, and number six, Angelique Christodoulou. And a three up front, number 11, Ashley Crofts, number 14, Mia Golding, and number 15, Gisela Pipino. So, well, I can tell you, as I arrived here quite early, it was very warm, especially on the side opposite us, those red seats for the reserve grade game. But the lengthening shadows and the setting sun has meant that this temperature right now as we approach kickoff in the first great game is just about perfect for football. Uh, today's referee, Eric Saba, hands the ball to Ashley Crofts. And by the way, Eric Saba is assisted uh, closest to us by Jaden Kong. There's the whistle and away we go. And the assistant on the far side is Stephanie Hilton. Now for the Spartans, chance to break a losing streak. They've lost the last three games, but they do have a lot of young talent that will take chances if the chances fall their way. So certainly a team to be wary of for any other team in this division. While for RPL Leichhardt, a shaky start for the defending premiers and defending Sapphire Cup winners losing their first two games. But two wins and two draws since then means RPL Leichhardt have steadily climbed the table. They are seventh as we enter round seven. There's Fristadulu and... I was unable to reel it in. By the way, the two benches. So firstly, for the Spartans, the backup keeper is Michaela Kent. The others are Isabel Wilson, Jarell Butros, Krista Oliva, Despina Vasiliadis, and Alana Putitsa. Well, as I just see how this attack plays out. And the Spartans looking to be the first team to have a shot and goal. Forced backwards by Arpia. Now Carroll. And that is intercepted by Golding, who has a free runner on the far side in Tanya Barazio. Nice one-touch pass by Hustadulu back to Golding and Barazio already, despite being a right back, wants to get forward as often as possible and still might try and make a play in it, but it is kicked into touch. And by the way, that Arpia bench, their backup keeper is Emilia Vidakovic. The others are Brindley Gentle, Imogen Lane, Sofia Konstantinidis, Zoe Panopoulos, and in a late change from what we were initially given, it does seem that... Charlotte Lancaster, who has caught the eye with some performances already in the 2024 season. She's made a late comeback from an injury suffered a few weeks ago. And Charlotte Man Lancaster, the Kiwi Youth International, will be is the final player on the bench. So, <clears throat> actually, I'm very pleased to see that Charlotte Lancaster has been named among the substitutes. has caught the eye. I was actually, remember a game, I think it was round three between RP and Sydney Olympic at Leichhardt Oval where Charlotte Lancaster basically decided the game for Arpia in an incredible five-minute spell where she scored direct from a corner and then set up two more. And that shows you the talent that Arpia's number seven can provide if she does get on the field today. Now Spartans yeah, early go going so far, but they've won the territory battle at least. And now here's Estelle Fregale for Arpia. By the way, the coaching staff, of course. I think one last shout out. So for the Spartans, and they're coached by Nacho Alcaraz. He's assisted by Pablo Gonzalez and Arpia Leichhardt, coached by Bradley Attard, and assisted by he is assisted by Kevin Bush. Now Walker bounces it back to Golding. 
And you might be able to see it that the lengthening shadows and the temperature dropping. It's led uh, at least to a very nice up tempo start here at Blacktown Football Park. Neat pass from Nkali, and I think that's Ngsad getting to the edge of the box before Kilbride with a half clearance. So back in from Latham. Young, the Apia skipper, intercepts very coolly, and then equally coolly back to the keeper, Margus. Mackenzie. And then that's forward again from Kilbride. <coughs> So Charlotte Owen ruled to have defended fairly, if, if physically against Gisela Pepino, and I'm just going to keep an eye on Pepino off frame as Margus rolls the ball out to Young. He's hobbling a little bit after that challenge, but uh, we think she'll be okay to continue. Crofts couldn't break the line, but Crofts manages to deflect the ball towards Mona Walker, another Kiwi Youth International, by the way, just like Charlotte Lancaster. Now. Walker, the one-two with Aristodoula, now to Crofts. This is nice and quick passing, and they found Pepino in space, low into the middle, and that's the clearance there. So that's Arpia's first real attack of note in this game. And you can see why Arpia like that after being shut out in the opening round against Manly United. They've scored multiple, multiple goals, at least two goals in every game since then. So that Spartans back four is certainly going to have to be on its toes this afternoon. <clears throat> Walker able to turn and find Pepino. As Walker involved again, I think there's at least one person with a handball shout there, but we'll go on and Eric Saba not particularly interested in that said handball shout. Now Maniti for Spartans and goes back to Norton. Kaparazov cushioned it nicely for Fregale and I think it is Fregale who's won a free kick although uh, I'll go on. I was wondering if they would move that because the ball didn't settle whether Foul was conceded, but Eric Saba, the referee, happy to let play continue. Now is Barazio under pressure from Ngsad and has to settle for the throw. And of course, I think, yes, by now, uh, the six NPL women's New South Wales game schedule for today will be underway. As Kaparazov chases, Marcus is out to the edge of the box and claims. And there was one game yesterday in this competition, and a thrilling one it was at the venue lovingly known as the Arctic Circle, the home ground of Norfolk Sydney Spirit, and Spirit defeating Bulls FC Academy by two goals to one. So another excellent job in commentary done for Spirit versus Bulls by Nikola Pozda, the man they call the Serbian Martin Tyler, as Norton is out and claims easily. Good shepherding from Chantel Manini. The other games uh, for today, uh, and we will, we do like to keep you, try to keep you up to date with what goals as they fly in around the ground. So there was a 4 p.m. kickoff today at North Taramara, Northern Tigers versus MacArthur Rams. There was a 4.45 p.m. kickoff, Football New South Wales Institute versus Gladesville Ravens. And then the other three 5 p.m. kickoffs, Sydney Olympic versus Sydney University. A game I like to call the NPL Women's New South Wales Distance Derby. Emerging Jets versus Illawarra Stingrays. That's at Lake Macquarie Regional Football Facility. Charlotte Owen heading into touch there. And the final one down at the Village Green where a newly promoted University of New South Wales. They face off against high-flying Manly United. Manly United, from memory, having a bit of developing a bit of an undefeated streak after victory over Institute seven days ago. But back to this game, and the Spartans, uh, I was about to say they'd 
Forced the turnover and halfway, but it comes straight back. Walker was looking for Crofts. Pass was blocked off, and perhaps a second chance to play the through ball. Here's Walker, surrounded by multiple defenders. Good technique from her and Golding. They went backwards, but RPF kept the ball. Christodoulou finding herself out wide. Now Brazio. Did she get the touch she wanted? Off a spot? No, she did not. Now Kaparazov, it was at an awkward height. And Oksaba ruling that that is not an intentional back pass from Kaparazov. And to be fair, no claims from the Spartans either. Now, you could see what Pepino was trying to do, hold it up for Kaparazov's run, but and the pass was blocked. Pepino able to win the ball straight back for the visitors. And by the way, of course, it's not just uh, here on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. It's not just um, every game that you can watch both live and on demand at the live tab on YouTube. As there's the wind up and the attempted at goal for a shot in anger for today's game. Uh, nothing to trouble Sophie Margus. And yes, of course, got every game from this competition, the women's top tier in New South Wales. And also, of course, we do have a match of the round from the women's second tier called League One Women's, and that game already played. Oh, the game for this weekend in League One Women's already played, and it ended up being a 3-1 victory to SD Raiders over Mount Druitt Town Rangers at Poppendetta Park. Uh, does appear, yes, that actually well done to the folk at Mount Druitt Town Rangers for uh, building a new media box, which I think this might very well be the first football New South Wales broadcast from their new media box. So. I hope the commentator Dave McDonald and the league writer Justin Davies, I hope they enjoyed the view. Now Fregale. And the quick pass is here down the line to Golding. Golding. And then the foul on Angela Christodoulou. Young looking for options, and as central defenders like to do when they don't like what's in front of them, she goes sideways to the other central defender. So Kilbride, then Kaparazov, and uh, Kaparazov, quick feet, back to Kilbride. Now Walker, step forward from midfield, who's trying to find Crofts with the header, and now Walker again foot in there for the Spartans now Latham looking to release Ngsad and I think she'll be quick enough to keep that in she is so Ngsad's one on one with Barazio and a good actually good work as the second defender from Mia Golding tracking back to protect a teammate just need uh, someone to play ball kid and yeah, now we'll go on uh, for the Spartans as they look to get back to winning ways their solitary victory for the 2024 campaign was in round three when they traveled up to Lake Macquarie and beat emerging Jets 6-0 and yes the Spartans do have quite a fair bit of young talent in this side and I think if you've been watching the highlights you may have noticed Alyssa Ingsad who's uh Actually wearing my favorite favorite number today. She's wearing number 27, but Ngsad, as Pepino turns but can't get past Owen. Ngsad is the leading scorer for the Spartans so far this season. Four goals in the opening six games, certainly a healthy tally, especially for a youngster. So keep an eye on her as there's the cross from McKenzie and then Mkali had broken away from any marking, but the cross didn't get to her, so it was a good defensive header. Twelve and a half minutes played here. And Rudy Hill, Eric Subihano here on the mic from uh, the Hill.
at Blacktown Football Park. And the score is currently Spartans nil, RP nil. Thanks for joining us at the live tab on the Football News FL's YouTube page. Now, Golding, then Hustadulud. Pepino has space nearest to us, and Fregale seen it. That's a nice ball from Fregale. Now, Pepino, ball loops up a bit, and that gave McKenzie a chance. McKenzie rushed back, but there, Pepino's got a foot in again and trying to keep this attack alive. She's stopped by Owen. Now, Young lofts it nicely for Walker. Fregale getting plenty of touches as usual in the upper midfield. Fregale, however, not getting a call from the referee. And Spartans mixing it up. There's been a, a bit of high pressing, but all sitting off and restricting the space as Young plays it forward and it's uh, headed away by Miniti. But Arpia come again. And Walker, Arpia, encouraged by Brad Adhard. They could hear the his shouts of encouragement from here. And Spartans are standing firm again. Now, oh well, with a friendly fire there, Fregale and Hristadulu got in each other's way. And Hristadulu tried to block the pass. It gets to Latham, but that's good central defensive work from Kilbride. Gentle went deep. Kilbride followed and was able to force a turnover. Now, nice work from Pepino, and Walker's found herself on the left touchline. Cuts inside, looking towards her teammates. And now that Hristadulu should keep this in. As the two number 17s going head to head, Brittany Duggan wins out for Spartans. And then, that's oh, actually, we go back to a free kick. I go back to a, because it will be a free kick for Spartans. Norton with the restart. And now Fregale once again. For RPL. Now, I think just offering Mir Golding had seen the opportunity to dart in behind, but it was good defensive work, I think, from Ngsad with the block there, uh, right in front of the RPL technical area. Now, Arpia Leichhardt, just looking at my stats, uh, plenty of attacking productivity in the last five games, scoring 14 goals. And that's the challenge facing the Young Spartan side here today. Uh, young, but there's a pretty decent bit of high-level experience already in this Spartan side. I did note the captain, Chantel Miniti but from memory still being a teenager actually I'll hold that thought as it's Keanu Latham racing and into the box then out of it again and Kilbride aiming for safety so attacking throw in for the Spartans coming up right. Right, yes just to finish that point uh, Spartans captain number two Chantel Maniti only has quite a few caps for the Philippines senior national team 
course, that's the national team that won their first ever Women's World Cup game last year in New Zealand. So it's good for the home team that they ha can have that kind of defensive experience to call on. Touch off Apia, yes. So the first corner of the game, and it's gone to the hosts. Looks like it'll be an in-swinger. Decent bit of bend on that, and it was over Young, but Pepino is getting the touch to help it out of the area. Now Walker, she's found a forward pass, and it ooh, didn't quite get to Hristadulu. Second time to put it back in. Owen, it's over Latham's head. Now, that could break for Mkali. And now as Carol Brazio steps in. Now, space could open up. Chance to use one of my favorite sayings. The set piece is an opportunity for both teams to score. So before the Spartans can back, can Apia take, take advantage? And I think they've done just enough there. So good tracking back from the hosts. And they tried to take it the other way with Latham, but the touch just heavy enough to allow Charlotte Young to do a little bit of shepherding. A thing that all <laughs> central defenders love to do, shepherding. Yet to meet a central defender who doesn't like doing that. Walker settling it for Apia. Now Kilbride. Young playing it forward. Crofts wanted the flick on. Pepino, she's going to chase, but now might make its way to Kaparazov. First time the Apia left backs had a real chance to get forward. And it's Pepino. They double up on her. And then the sliding challenge to get it away. For Gale. And wasn't able to recycle because Latham's back defending for the Spartans. But now Walker for Apia. Pepino found a little pocket of space, looking immediately for the killer ball. Crofts was the target. I think that was Brittany Duggan who was well positioned. Long throw. Is that Corona? So I love a fullback with a long throw. So I think that was Deanna Corona, the Spartans number 26, who flung that as far as she could. So that potentially is something to look out for if the Spartans get an attacking throw in on that side of the field. Spartans trying to keep it in front of the canteen here at Blacktown Football. The part of the pitch in front of the canteen at Blacktown Football Park. Might break for Apia. Here's Fristadulu. Crofts in front of her. And more players arriving. More maroon jerseys streaming forward. Fristadulu kind of holds it up. And then I think that'll be forward by Owen. So once again. Uh, Spartans de defending very well against Apia. Walker. Now, if they can see Golding in space on the far side, it was there for a moment. Instead, it goes to Barazio. Uh, Barazio to Golding, and Barazio runs beyond. There's the one, two, and Golding's got a lot of speed. There's a good crossing opportunity, and there, yeah, well, Crofts was free, but the ball didn't get to her. It's safe hands from Anna Norton. Now, 
as I said, I would like to go around the ground. So thanks once again to Justin Davies, legendary football New South Wales reporter and the current League One women's reporter from the second tier. He's very nicely and given me some scores from the women's second tier. So yes, actually in the game yesterday, South Coast, South Coast Flame nil, Central Coast Mariners won. So the Mariners expected to be title contenders and promotion contenders. I have won again. As I said earlier in the live stream game that kicked off at 3 p.m., Mount Druid Town Rangers 1, SD Raiders 3. And they've got his, Justin has given me three other full time scores uh, Marconi Stallions 3, Camden Tigers 2. So that was, I think that's Marconi galloping to their first victory of the season. We have um, actually, well, hold that thought is it will look like it could have broken for Christodoulou, but there's uh, the safety first clearance from Maniti. And also, actually, it's the Battle of the Lions. We had at Majors Bay Reserve Inter Lions 2, Bankstown City Lions 6, Bankstown City another promotion contender, and then a nil all draw between Southeast Phoenix and the PNFC. Thank you so much, Justin. And just because I like being complete, the two other games which we don't think have finished yet, there's Sutherland Strikers taking on Blackhand City at a really new venue to the New South Wales State Comps, the, the Ridge Sporting Complex in Sutherland Shire. Actually, I was looking at the match centre beforehand. They're on they're on field 10 of the Ridge Sporting Complex, so goodness knows how many fields are at that complex. Almost as many fields as at um, Wanderers Football Park, which is, of course, next door to us. And uh, the final game there, the latest of the kickoffs in League One Women's, was actually a grand final rematch from last year in League One Women's, Hills United versus St. George FC. And that was at Bella Vista Public School. Because if you're less familiar with these competitions, yes, there is a synthetic venue at a public school in the Hillshire. That's where Hills United women play their home games. And then back to this one. Walker giving a good chase, and it's Brittany Duggan. Actually, good uh, central defensive work. The fullback, Owen, was up the field, and Duggan trotted across to cover. Now, Pepino. Now she's gotten past the challenge, and Pepino going straight for goal, and it's in. That's a magnificent strike from Gisela Pepino. And Arpia Leichhardt have hit the front. Pepino's third goal of the year. And it was special. And it didn't, be, it didn't appear to be much on when she received the throw and back to goal with the defender right on her. Uh, she's turned the defender beautifully and sent a curling strike over Anna Norton into the net. It's Spartans nil, Arpia Leichhardt won. And that, I suspect, is something you might see clipped up for the NPL New South Wales socials and Facebook and the Instagram and the Twitter because that really was an amazing goal from Arpia's number 15 who's on the ball now Now, anyway, chance for the Spartans. And Carol, I think the right idea, trying to, the way she was facing, trying to curl it back towards the goal, but uh, not enough curl put on it there. Now Crofts, now looking for Golding, but I think Corona got the head start there and will play it over the touchline. Crofts shows, comes a bit shorter for the throw in and defended by Maniti and defended well enough that Spartans win the goal kick. And now for Ashley Crofts, uh, Spartans number 11. Of course, this is, will be a homecoming. She is a, a she was a longtime Spartans player and scored quite a number of their goals for their first grade team down the years. And of course, if you've been following this league at all closely in recent times, you all know that Ashley Crofts is, is the golden boot from last year and also the player of the year. So it will come as no shock to you to to learn that Ashley Crofts is also leading RP in scoring for 
the 2024 season with uh, four goals from the opening six games. So clearly Ashcroft standing out for her play and also for those incredibly bright green boots. You really can't miss her out on the field, can you? Crofts dropping deep to hold it up, but it's Mkali battling with Christodoulou. Arpi still have it, though. By the way, a couple of other former Spartans actually far up here today. So number three, Tanya Barazio. Just like Crofts, a long, a long time Spartans player or previously. And uh, the coach, head coach, Brad Attard. Uh, also used to be uh, the women's first grade head coach for the Spartans. So uh, as some measure of familiarity with this venue and this club from amongst uh, the visitors today. Now Walker, it's opened up for her, looking for a through ball, finds Pepino. And Pepino did her best to keep it away from two, and she's actually, yep, she's fouled Owen and conceded the free kick. But, of course, players do lift in confidence. Plays it after scoring a goal, so uh, sending the ball Pepino's way, uh, not the, certainly not the worst strategy for Arpia. As McKenzie tried to find Owen's overlapping run, Christodoulou has broken it up. Crofts with the layoff. Uh, Pepino again. Fregale has got the room to go forward and hold off a challenge. Now Fregale, it's a little bit narrow, narrow, but she's got the options. And then uh, it's read well there, I think by Carroll, and she's. Looking to go direct. McKenzie's got good speed. So does Teal Kilbride. And Kilbride has prevented any kind of shot. However, at the expense of a corner. In swing is the order of the day for the Spartan set pieces. There's the signal. Goes low to the near post. And as the head, I think, from Kaparazov. Not the tallest player, but Rosewell at the near post. Did what a team needed of her. And uh, Golden, good pressure there. So we're actually from that, from defending that set piece, Sarpi have won a throw in on halfway. And also, I think they've seen the set piece. Ah, I did. Something I've noticed in football. The defensive set piece. Arpi have seen that as an opportunity to swap the wingers. So now it does appear that Golding's on the left side of their attack and Pepino's on the right side of their attack. Arpi are not resting on their laurels after taking the lead. Looking to uh, show something different to the Spartans. finding Walker and uh, Walker yes it does get to Pepino who uh, was one-on-one -on -one with Corona but then inside her darted over as quick as she could to close down the space now Hristadoulou insistent in getting the ball she'd found a pocket of space and she rides the tackle she'll go from distance and that's uh, is going to go wide of the target but even so good work there uh, from Hristadoulou uh, she wanted the ball. She'd found found the space. It was a good strength to hold off that challenge. And just the shot didn't go her way. Now, Mackenzie. And Kaparazov has to scramble. Mackenzie to the byline she goes and oh it's through the crowd and shot at the far post and that was I think Ingsad coming in and Barazio got the positioning spot on and keepers love defending like that Margus didn't have to make a save Barazio got a body in the way and she has helped and protect this a one goal lead that Arpi have created Uh, 
Pino. Well, the RPS certainly keeping Spartans on their toes. Pepino's back on the left-hand side. Golding back on the right-hand side of their attack. Crofts. Pepino looking first time. And bouncing ball could be awkward, especially when you face your own goal. Crofts picks up the scraps. And Crofts goes for goal, and it's an awkward one, and... Keepers hate it when the ball bounces in front of them. Anna Norton, credit to her, has done enough. It will be a corner kick. And Ashley Crofts, as you'd expect from the reigning golden boot, never hesitant to take a shot if she's open anywhere near the goal. And Anna Norton stops her from adding another goal to her CV. So everyone back except one player. For Spartans. I think it's Ingsad who stayed in the center circle and uh, Arpil mix it up and go short to Fregali. She delivers and there's Charlotte Young and could still be a chance. It's no, it's flags up. So Crofts ruled offside. I think Charlotte Young was going direct for goal. Almost turned into a great knockdown for Crofts. But the flag goes up. The flag's up from Steph Hilton. And the far, further side to us. Oh, sorry, the further side to us. Now, Arpia pressing high. Here's Fristadulu and Crofts into the middle. Pepino is headed away by Owen. And then it breaks, I think that's Mkali. And yeah, look, it could be four and four if the Spartans are quick enough. Mkali finding McKenzie. The Maroon jerseys reading back as quick as they can. The cross didn't have the curl, wasn't curling towards the teammates. And so Margus gratefully gathers the ball. Young under pressure from Ngsad. And she's got uh, the rest of the back four with her, so Young taking it fairly easily. As Arpia tried to build from the back. Walker giving the shout, and oh, so strong in the 50 50. Player on the turf, but we go on. Here's Carroll and Ngsad. That's a decent ball, and Marcus is out, though, very quickly. And prevents the shot. Golding dropping deeper and uh, Fregali finding herself and on the right touchline for a moment. And of course, you always see this team goes up. There's a little bit more confidence with the touches and the movement. The passes zip to each other a little bit more quickly. Walker's pulled out near side. And Walker, uh, Fregali, that was, she was at kind of disrupted. Up here once again doing just enough to keep possession. I'll try the far side for now. And that flags up. So that's that's gone out. So I see that's a little win. For this That's a little win for Spartans. They forced the ball backwards and then read that it was going to go to the other side and pressed immediately. Thrown down the line, headed back to the thrower. Now Daniele. Towards Ingsad, flag stays down. And that is also excellent shepherding from Mia Golding, who is back in a defensive position and snuffed out that threat very nicely. Now Crofts is the defensive midfielder for this phase of play and well, she's won a free kick. Yeah. 
Hines for Stadulu back to goal. And uh, Hines for Gali. As Brad Attard keeps uh, reminding his players of the game plan, there's the longer ball, and Norton's out but doesn't get anywhere near it now. Golding. How, what's the call? It will be a throw in. There's a little bit of miscommunication there in the Spartans' defence. The keeper coming out, and as the defender was dealing with it, I think Corona's played it. As a Corona's played it over the sideline for this throw. Crofts heading it back towards the edge of the box. I think that's Golding in a 50-50. Now Charlotte Young. Fragale, nice turn. But then, oh, well, it's about to say, giving it up for Gali. Stop the ball, Spartans ball from out the back. And Arpia stopping the Spartans from getting out of their own half. And that's for Gali. She's so good at that. You think, Arpia's number 16, you think you've got two players to press on her. You think you're going to get the ball back, and then you don't. She just gets rid of it. Now Crofts. And Crofts. Couldn't link up with Golding that time. Now, the back heel. That's nice. Can Spartans build something from here? On the halfway line. Walker says no. Approaching half time now, and, and with Arpia leading the Spartans by goal to nil. Yes, this will be the familiar sight, I think, for the rest of the season. Daylight savings time is over, and uh, the floodlights in full effect. Certainly, despite how warm it is, of course, at the start of this sea at the start of the season, very much a winter league, and. I think now it kind of looks more like a winter league with those five lights. Crofts, nice ball out wide, and I think it's Brazio who will keep it in play. Brazio crosses, and it stayed in. Also went straight to Anna Norton. The keeper goes quickly and goes towards halfway. Takes a bounce. McKenzie got ahead to it, and Kilbride, a little look over the shoulder, and oh, well, decent chase from McKenzie. Uh, Kilbride's able to see it over the sideline. Uh, Pino under pressure from two players. Back it goes to Kilbride. Kilbride to Kaparazov. She's overlapped. And now Crofts in a battle. I think she got the touch of a Spartans player. Jaden Kong, assistant nearest to us, agrees. Into the final five minutes of the first half. I think I can see opposite to us. Uh, Spartan substitutes going through the early stages of, of a warm up. Of course, as the team trailing, they're more likely to make to be the first team to make any substitutions. And I think, by the way, I will apologize in advance because as Owen gets the foot in there, there's a nice, there's a nice um, facility we have here at Blacktown Football Park, but of course, subs on the far side, it can be um, difficult to identify sometimes. So we will try our best with kind of anything that goes on there in front of the big Spartans FC advertising board. Fragale. And then it was Young, but uh, Young couldn't find a teammate. Mm -hmm. 
Now, sponge breaking down the left. There's the early cross. And I think the cross might have been a bit too early for her teammates. Kaparazov has... Uh, possibly might be a handball, actually, against McKenzie. Just enough time to play it back to the keeper. And Kilbride. Nice pass there by Kilbride. And Pepina was able to face forward. Now Christodoulou. And she's looked for the switch. It's Walker on the left. And the left wing, but she's gone too early. Flags up. Uh, it's looking good, that move for Arpio. As, uh, they'd invited the high press, then they were able to play through it. At that time, the Spartans' high defensive line did its job. Anyway, I mentioned how warm it was during the reserves game before this one. Well, we are at this time of year because I'm putting a jacket on as we speak just to kind of paint the picture for those. What the players are experiencing. Yep, it's definitely a winter comp. As there he is, there's... The halftime whistle, Eric Saba deciding not to play any time added on for the first half. And the scoreboard that's looking good for the visitors as the two teams head to the dressing sheds. Arpia Leichhardt leading Blacktown Spartans by a goal to nil. And a very nice goal it was too from Gisela Pepino, a curling strike from outside the box in the 25th minute. And I encourage you, if you joined us late, to go back on your YouTube stream and watch it for yourself because... It was really a very nice strike from RPS number 15. That's what separates the two teams at halftime. Eric Sabihano here on the mic for Football New South Wales. We'll take a short break and then we'll be back for the second half.
Hello everyone, welcome back to the second half of our coverage from Blacktown Football Park, round seven of the NPL Women's New South Wales competition. And the score is Blacktown Spartans nil, RPL Leichhardt one, as we head into the second period. The sun has well and truly set here in Rudy Hill. The pitch bathed in floodlight, now are ready for the second period. If you've just joined us, Eric Sabihana here on the mic for Football New South Wales. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube page. And that RPA goal that separates the two sides as the ball appears to be stuck on the turf and the call has gone the way of the Spartans. That RPA goal, a really spectacular goal courtesy of Gisela Pepino. Something well worth going back on the stream and seeing if you haven't already. And of course, of course, we are at the far side uh, or the side opposite the technical areas. Uh, no fourth official in this competition, so we'll try and do our best with any subs. I don't think the subs have made at halftime as Margus clears into touch. But I will uh, kind of confirm that for you. Just look at these shirt numbers and then might run through the lines once again. that and that's a very confident shout from Margus claims possession now of course the good thing about YouTube streaming going around the grounds as easy as uh, opening multiple tabs on your browser and just uh, checking each stream so the uh, last time I checked uh, these games, I know it was um, Northern Tigers 1, MacArthur Rams 2. That's uh, about 20 minutes to go in that one. Football New South Wales Institute nil, Gladesville Ravens 1 early in the second half there. The Sydney Olympic 1, Sydney University 1, and Emerging Jets nil, Illawarra Stingrays 1, and then University of New South Wales 1, Manly United nil. That's uh, the scores in progress elsewhere in this competition. Okay, yep, uh, so sorry about that with the signs, just checking that RP have not made a sub, so they are, the visitors are as they were to begin the game, and then that was Kiani Lathan stepping in for the Spartans. Now, Ngsad up against Barazio. Barazio's done that well, and the 1 2 with Golding. Now it's Hristadulu, and Corona did keep it in, but Hristadulu went straight to try and win, went straight towards Corona to try and win the ball back. And eventually, well, the ball magnetized to this touchline without actually going out. Brazio eventually shepherds it away. Barazio crofts the closest one there for Apia, but it's Midi instead with the first play at the ball. Uh, pass too awkward for Corona, so that goes out. And I think, well, there's a ball near near there, so Barazio can get on with it. But uh, that kind spectator, thank you, that kind spectator for uh, retrieving the ball for the players. So we can uh, kind of minimize the out of play stoppages, if that makes sense. Now, Apia shuffle it back. Barazio, now Golding. She's got the support from Hristadula. Nice dummy from Walker to find Barazio. And Barazio looking for Crofts. It was blocked. And Golding, I think, tried the subtle change of pace. 
and beat the defender. Ingsad stuck to the stuck to the task. Up here, remaining patient. Here's Fregale. That is a strong tackle from Mkali, and I think she's also managed to win a free kick. So I'm 99% sure Spartans haven't made a sub at halftime. So just apologies. We are doing our best. It is the players furthest away from us. Shirt numbers can be a little bit tricky to see as that's Ingsad fouled by Barazio. Ristadulu and then Walker now Owen had the first play at it and she's helped out by a booming clearance from Duggan now Young I think perhaps didn't want to take the risk of a back pass call although I don't think that was going to be called anyway but Young just making sure and now Apia move out to the left hand side ball to Crofts a little pocket of space and Crofts Returns the favor and Kaparazov charging as quick as she can. The ball is going to beat both her and the covering defender. No, it's actually, you know, despite it not working out at the end, that's good um, initiative in an attacking sense from Kaparazov. She uh, saw the opportunity to play it to Crofts and then cross face forward. Kaparazov, you know, it was a nice supporting run. There was the space in behind. I think something RP coach Brad Atthard, I'm sure he'll be um, grateful to have uh, these two energetic fullbacks, Barazio and Kaparazov. Uh, kind of really like the two energizer bunnies of RP Leichhardt going up and down the flanks all game as Walker. That's a lovely work to get past a couple of players. She has an option to her left. That's Fregale and Walker. She's joined the attack now. Kaparazov holds off a tackle now. Nice turn. Another sharp turn from Pepino. Crofts. Crofts finding goal. Goal. Well, actually, Golding left it for Crofts, who did the wraparound run, and that will end up being a corner. So, by my very, very unofficial tally, that's two corners each. Regale is the short option, but there's the signal. Christodula goes into the middle. Norton's up, and that's a good catch in traffic. And Norton, she wants the quick release, and I think she's going to try it to the, into the one-on-two. Inside double marked. The defensive header goes backwards, and Kaparazov now playing it forward. Well, that's a nice touch with the outside of the boot. Good flick from Walker. So it's Pepino up against Owen. Pepino, I think she has a couple of step overs, then she goes for goal and cannot repeat her heroics from the first half, but uh, still a nice run by Pepino to get into the box and uh, make the space for the shot. Norton, and the longer goal kick. Golding with the header forward. And there's Corona, and Fregale, is an uncharacteristic loose touch, let Latham in, and Latham was looking for the early ball, which is snaffled up by Kilbride. Go left, Kaparazov again. And Crofts coming deep to receive from Young. And Duggan followed Crofts all the way. And pressured her into a bit of a loose pass. Now it's up for grabs in the middle. And it could have been a chance. Uh, not even a half penalty shout. A quarter penalty shout. Spartans players stayed on the turf. I think that's McKenzie. Good defending from Kaparazov to prevent the shot. And good. Yeah. McKenzie's back to her feet. This is Barazio. 
doing some defending. She's got it near her own corner flag now. Oh, that's a nice one-two from Fregale. And it suddenly starts to open up. Fregale with two in front of her. Goes sideways towards Walker. The orange jerseys get back behind the ball. And that ball forward. Now it's you know, it could have been a 50-50 in the middle of the park. I think uh, I didn't mind the idea you know, from the attack with Young stepping up. Carroll's tried to play it in behind the space Young vacated, but uh, the pass wasn't met by a run that could take advantage of that. Krista Dula receives between the lines, and then that's Duggan, who's actually had a pretty good game today. He stops another through ball. Spartans coaching staff, adamant that they that should have been their throw. Ref disagrees. Now Arpia, yes. When in doubt, throw it down the line. They gain about 15 meters there. Crossed with a layoff towards Christodoulou. And there's Christodoulou again. Kaparazov, or oh, she's won the 50-50. Gotten past the defender. Uh, Parasov, good crossing position. Norton's up and claims. Norton, well, a bit of hasty there. That's all RP as the ball dropped to the turf. Now the Spartans have it with Maniti. And Corona plays it back to her captain. And then back to the keeper. Now Golding will press the keeper. And Diagon to the far side. Apia take over. Now, Walker read the attentions well. It's a pretty decent position for Apia. Crofts to the left, but she'll look to the right. Golding doesn't get the touch to fall her way. And now Mkali and now the Spartans on the move. D decent ball from Latham. And it will be a corner kick. And half shot. Half penalty shot for a handball there. Eric Saba instead points to the corner flag. So everyone back for Arpia. As the corner comes in, keeper stays on the line. It's the header from Young. Still up for grabs. Krista Dulu can't get it out of the box. Engsad is blocked off by Brazio as that battle continues. And then Engsad, not just a foul. That's going to be the first yellow card of the game. Going to the Spartans, number 27. By the way, once, shout out once again to Justin Davies. Gave me a couple more uh, score updates from League One Women's. They're kind of the two later kickoffs. So it was Sutherland Strikers nil, Blacktown City three. So joy for their new uh, women's technical director, Matt Costantini, a man with a lot of uh, coaching experience in this league and in also in League One Women's. And at Bella Vista Public School, Hills United one, St. George FC one. As is that the signal? I think. Perhaps Barazio, will she require some treatment? I think I see an RP physio coming onto the field. Of course, because there was a card shown, Barazio does not need to leave the field after the treatment, although she seems to be headed that way anyway. So it doesn't look too badly affected, the RP number three, but hopefully it might, it might even be something like a bit of visible blood or something that just needs to be patched up. After all that, we'll restart with a free kick. 
fact, that will also be Spartan sub, so I can see number seven, Krista Oliva, uh, who does, if the opportunity presents itself, have a very nice left-footed strike on her, so could be something to watch for. Oliva's gone to the left-hand side of the Spartans attack. I think that would move, that would mean Ingsad is playing more centrally. And I think that would also then mean that Keanu, Le Keanu Latham is the player replaced for the Spartans. And I'll just keep one eye on Barazio. But, uh, the running repairs have been done. And Barazio signaled back on the field, so Apio were not shorthanded for too long. Inside with the header looking for Mkali. Instead, it's young for Arpia. Uh, Kaparazov. Pepino. And they keep it moving, going left to right. Arpia. Here's Golding. Up against two. Holds on to it. And now Fregali. Young. I was thinking about the diagonal, but I think no one was wide enough for that to be the play. So she goes centrally. And Golding allowed to turn. Now, out wide, Fregale. Golding. Charlotte Young inching forward. Now she'll try the diagonal. Aiming for Pepino. There's the headock. The scraps picked up by Christodoulou. Uh, Barazio back in the field. Crofts with, oh, she thought, I think she might have thought the runner wasn't coming, but it was. Pepino's done her best uh, to harass and prevent the counter. In fact, Apia will hold on to the ball. Now, Spartans, can they get out? No, they can't because of Walker. A strong tackle and then well, she didn't hit, hit the turf, but she did win a free kick. Now, can tell you, Mona Walker, uh, she does have a decent long-range dead ball strike on her. Uh, I remember seeing that when she was playing for Emerging Jets, or it does look like instead it will be the captain, Charlotte Young, to take it. Now, a long way out, do, but does Charlotte Young go direct for goal anyway? Young, she will go for goal, and it's into the wall. The second effort, it's lobbed, and uh, that will be seen out for a goal kick. And Spartans, having been the first team to make a change, perhaps we might remind people out there of the other options, uh, or the other bench options that you could see later on. So uh, for Spartans, the backup keeper is Michaela Kent. The others are Isabel Wilson, Jarell Butros, Chris, sorry, Despina Vasiliadis, and Alana Putitsa. As Nargis doing some sweeper keeping out of the box. And then Nargis have, might have to backpedal quickly as there's the shot from Mkali. But the keeper claims it. She got back in time. Now, I can see a sub getting some last minute instructions. Now, I don't mind guessing and get it wrong. Arik, that looks like Charlotte Lancaster. Might be the first player introduced. Uh, being captain obvious here, Arpia would feel safer with the second goal as Pepino chases that, but instead it'll be Duggan. Now Hristadula's up there with the high press. And Hristadula will move it backwards. Now Fregale. And here's Young. Young looking for the runners. I think that's Fregale there. Owen lets it bounce, then puts it over the sideline. In fact, we might see a double sub again. No guarantees I'm correct here, but oh yes, I can see it. Just about see a number nine. So Brindley Gentle is about to come on for Arpia Leichhardt. Uh, 
That's Pepino, good skill, walking the tightrope. But now she's found Crofts. Can Crofts turn? And now she tries to find a teammate. And here's Walker. Walker goes down, and that'll be a penalty. A penalty for Apia Leichhardt. Mona Walker with a late run into the box, causing havoc. She was brought down. It's a spot kick. And everyone has left it to Ashley Crofts, who is now faced with the task of making it 2-0 to Apia Leichhardt. It'll be Crofts against Anna Norton. And Crofts, it's saved. And the follow-up, she still has it. Now what a save from Anna Norton. And there'll be a Spartans free kick. Norton guessed right. Two strong hands to get it away from danger. And then the Spartans ran into the middle to block any kind of second attempt there. So it stays at 1-0. And that, who knows, that could be crucial come the end of the game. Is that, ah, yes, that's... Now, you can see, well, both teams have made subs. I know Brindley, oh, I thought the Spars were making a sub. No, Crystal Lee was just getting a second ball. Brindley Gentles on the field now. And I think I'm hoping to see the player that will face the building so I can see a number seven because it does look like Charlotte Young. Charlotte, sorry, Charlotte Lancaster, Lancaster is also on the field. Now, Fregale. And Fregale. Gets the support from Barazio. He's gentle, immediately into the action. And it's played towards halfway. And Young under pressure from Ngsad. And the pressure forces the turnover. Uh, I'm just trying to work out who the Apia players were that were replaced. Fregale's had enough of that little phase of play. Gentle chases, but can't keep it in. Okay, okay, I've got it. So it's Brindley Gentle and Charlotte Lancaster on. Gisela Pepino and Mia Golding off. And Lancaster has some, have, might get on the end of this here. She's beaten Charlotte on to the punch at Lancaster. I'm not sure she hit it cleanly, but it will be a corner. Up his third corner of the evening. And decent shifts, by the way, from the two substituted players, Mia Golding and, of course, especially Gisela Pepino with the goal that separates the two sides. Uh, Apia loving the firepower they can bring off their bench. And now Gentle and Lancaster have about 25 minutes to get their name on the score sheet. As the corner comes in, and it's not held. And Eric Saba rules a last touch of Apia Leichhardt, goal kick. Let's see, I think I can see a bit of a reshuffle as well in the Apia attack. So Charlotte Lancaster, in a sense, the direct replacement for Gisela Pepino on the left wing. But you can see Brindley Gentle has gone to centre forward, and... Ashley Crofts is now on the right wing for Apia to uh, take over the role that Mia Golding was playing. And Barazio steps up as it's Corona getting forward, but the two-on-one works for Apia there. Now Gentle allowed to bring it down, but then it's Charlotte Carroll to win it back for the Spartans. Apologies in advance, by the way. There's two Charlottes on each side, so I feel like calling the wrong surname is now almost a guarantee at this point as we're midway through the second half. Apia Leichhardt leading Spartans by a goal to nil. A goal came after roughly 25 minutes from Gisela Pepino. Curling strike from outside the box. Very nice work from the Apia player that was recently substituted. for Spartans chance to build the pressure
Up it goes, and now Margus comes up, and he doesn't claim it. She's fallen heavily, so we got to, I think, well, Eric, once Eric Sarper sees, he'll stop the game surely because can't really c continue with a keeper on the turf. Let's hope Margus is okay. Apia Fizu is immediately on the pitch. One of those awkward ones. He had keeper, defender, and attacker going for the ball. Margus has uh, worn the worst of it. And we do hope that she is okay to continue. Now, while we have this stoppage, of course, the Spartans technical area taking this opportunity to um, impart some instructions. One for one final push from his team, from their team. And we, in fact, Charlotte Young, showing her leadership, she's uh, huddled, but got the other players huddled around her. So uh, in that sense, she's being the coach on the field, if that makes sense. He's reminding all the players of what's required. Now, so that's going to be a drop ball. Good to see. Margus okay to continue. No keeper substitution required. And yep. Sporting work there from Charlotte Carroll. Playing it straight back to the keeper. So we'll go on. that Mkali wanted but now for Spartans how will they go we'll try and box him in not really so Barazio going down the line to Crofts uh, Hustadulu is looking I think for the longer option Gentle making the run followed by Manidi and then Gentle well she did keep it in play but that'll run over their goal line uh, that's good work from Manidi and Brindley Gentle, uh, formerly of Emerging Jets, but and I'll, and really came to prominence with all the goals she scored, well into double figures in the 2023 season. Uh, uh, encouraged Arpia to make a play for her services. Now Brindley Gentle playing for Arpia Leichhardt as Barazio holds off Mkali. The good crossing position. That's Manidi in the way of the cross. Walker does she go straight back into the middle? Oh, she tried to. It's blocked by Daniela, who's, I think, is a bit sore, a bit of a stinger that for Daniela. She tried to block it. Now Gentle looking to keep it alive, and she might get a loose ball, you know. It's Gentle from an acute angle. Manidi puts it up in the air, and Norton can't hold on to it. It's eventually cleared. Walker. Now, oh, I think she was going for the long-range effort. Walker, instead it breaks to Barazio, and now Crofts. And Crofts. That's a good ball, and there's Lancaster, and Lancaster has been fouled. It's another spot kick. That cross from Ashley Crofts caused havoc. A ball that was zinged towards the far post. And it's going to be a spot kick. And Angeli Christodoulou with the responsibility from 12 yards for Apia. Ristadulu tasked with doubling her team's lead. Uh, Norton has a chance to become the penalty hero again for the Spartans. That's Ristadulu up against Norton. And Ristadulu has put it wide. So it stays at 1 0. And the Spartans. Yeah, still in it. Walker with the header there. Well, so look at the clock. Almost into the final 15 minutes, and uh, is is that pen penalty miss going to give the Spartans some impetus, some belief? By the way, I think Charlotte Owen was the player booked. 
as part of that second penalty kick. Now there's the encouragement from the coaching staff and then even more encouragement because they've won the ball back. Christodoulou will she tried the block right, it came back to Carroll and uh, the effort from way downtown is easily fielded by Margus. aiming for gentle she'll have a second go with the throne from almost the same spot and by the way just a reminder of the remaining bench options for RP coach Brad Attard so plays we could see later on Emilia Vidakovic is the backup keeper the others Imogen Lane Sofia Konstantinidis and Zoe Panaopoulos and as Tristadula chases that and Duggan takes over now Croft's looking to use her speed up against Corona. Corona does the work of a fullback and will it roll out? It's, well, after all that, the free kick goes against Crofts. And going back to the RPS substitutes, of course, as a football New South Wales commentator, it, I'd be, it'd be pretty poor form with me if I didn't give a shout out to the relative of another football New South Wales commentator. That, of course, is Sophia Constantinidis, sister of Will Constantinidis, who has been doing a great job for four years uh, calling games for us in both the men's and women's competitions. So maybe we might see uh, some late action for Sophia later on. I'm sure that will... Uh, make the whole of the Constantinidis family happy. And I think Gentle wanted a call, not getting it from Eric Saba. Here's Norton, and that could be awkward. And uh, the touch of Gentle goes into a Norton's gloves. That's Maniti, is the latest player to need some treatment. And oh, I've got to keep my eyes all over the place because the Spartans have also made a substitution. So firstly, I'll keep one eye on Maniti, hope she's okay. And secondly, that new player. Do I see a number 29? Yeah, so number 29 would be Despina Vasiliadis. So a second sub made by Spartans. As as they look for what would now be a late equaliser. It'll be in the 79th minute or thereabouts. And also, see, I'm also watching Chantel Maniti still lying in the centre circle. This would be a big blow for the Spartans if she couldn't complete the game. Good to see Minidis on her feet. She will have to leave the field, so uh, that would require a defensive reshuffle. 
for Spahns, or will they just make a sub? Yeah, it's good to see Manidi being applauded off, and another good game in central defence. Uh, PSG will not go through the full 90 minutes, but it was player welfare the most important thing, and decided not to take any risks. So coming on is, uh, that would be number five, Isabel Wilson. So that's a straight swap. Will, Isabel Wilson now alongside Brittany Duggan in Spartan Central. Yeah, in the Spartan Central defense. Crofts looking for Gentle. And Gentle, well, it's an early test for Wilson. She's done it well. Safety first and preventing Gentle getting the ball. from Pristadulu up against two and uh, another clearance over the sideline so now attacking throw in for the visitors We're into the final 10 minutes here still 1-0 to Apia Leichhardt over the Spartans a goal coming from Gisela Pepino Crofts. Of course, he can't be offside from a throw in, but she hasn't got the contact right on that one. So, goal kick. And good defending, it has to be said. Yeah, I think it was Corona pressing, pressuring the cross. By the way, as that's his. Sing towards some Carly. She plays it further forward. And Young breaks it up. All right, Vasiliadis, I think she's replaced Helena Daniela in the, the Spartans midfield. Now, Oliva. And ah, quick enough to win the corner. More encouragement from the Spartan spectators. And in fact, Exile was just holding on play because there's inadvertently a second ball on the field. Carroll's the short option. Who is guarding now. She's been waved into the middle. And Oliva delivers. And it's over everyone. And here's a chance for a shot. And... Well, Apiat having trouble clearing it. So there's Young, still in the box. And the shot loops up and into Margus's gloves. Yeah, Margus with the switch towards Kaparazov. And Lancaster. Lancaster. She's won the throw and not much room to work with, but... RPS number seven did that nicely. And it's after that little scare in their penalty box. So given that the visitors some kind of breathing room, at least they can step up. And now Spartans on the move, although the numbers certainly favor Arpia, but Spartans still have it. That's well done. And now it goes into the middle. Header from Fregale. Lancaster, Lancaster, quick feet. Now she might want an option, although she's taken on three defenders. The fourth defender, who's Ankali, slows her down. Uh, Lancaster still trying to find Crofts before it's sent the other way. And now Young. Young gets helped out by Fregale. And Fregale, that... I think that was going to be a free kick, but I actually could hear it. Eric Saba saying there's going to be an advantage. And Gentle trying to make a nuisance of herself. And it might break for Lancaster here. And Lancaster uh, saw where the keeper was. Go, went direct for goal. That uh, trundles wide. But, uh, there's one player on this field that can score from that kind of range. It's Charlotte Lancaster. As I said, top of the broadcast. She scored direct from a corner in round three against Olympic. And she does hit the ball very, very hard, I think. 
think there was another goal against Bulls FC Academy. And showed how much power she's got in that left boot. Now, Gentle. And Gentle gets the shots from Lancaster. Here's Lancaster. It's low, and that'll be wide. Gentle again, supporting run from Pristadulu, but that's, I think, Carona who's sent it towards halfway. Now, that's happening. Ah, it's going to be another substitution, so Angela Christodoulou, I think that's being applauded off the field. Zoe Panagopoulos will uh, replace Ristadoulou for say, roughly the last four minutes or so plus stoppage time. Uh, good story behind Panagopoulos. She's either still 14 or has just turned 15, but so incredibly young, but already uh, making an impact both for the Arpia Reserves team and the Arpia First Grade team. She has one goal to her name, which is a very lovely goal scored in Arpia's 4-1 win over Institute a couple of weeks ago. And here is Panagopoulos. And the first meaningful action is to get ping for a free kick. Now Wilson... And then the head from Barazio, Panagopoulos. Now Barazio crosses deep just to help build this play. Arpia will have to settle for the throw. Lancaster and Lancaster did that stay in did so Spartans have the chase so does Gentle and back to Norton but this is where Arpia want it now really it's kitchen sink time for Spartans whatever they do it's got to be in a hurry now Panagopoulos almost in there disrupting Wilson now Gentle's in there as well Corona back to the keeper again And now uh, Arpia just uh, satisfied with letting Spartans have it in this area of the field. Now Ngsad holds down R2 and is quick enough to get there. And he goes for the delivery. I'm not sure it might have gotten a touch off Arpia. It actually will break for Gentle on the halfway line or near it. And Gentle and can't find Lancaster's run. Now here's the delivery. Margus is up and catches. Here's Carol. And Carol. Uh, nice idea with the dummy from Crofts, but. And the ball would run away from her, but Arpia do have this throw in. And Eric Saba 
Trying to keep a lid on any time wasting. As Crofts backs in the defender. Now Oliva finds a teammate. Up here might need to scramble here. Young. Cool as always. And to kill Bride, but Ingsad almost broke it up there. So they go back to the keeper. And there we go. Now it's Lancaster. It's starting to get stretched at this stage of the game. Pretty much in stoppage time now. And Apia trying to see out the game and take that 1-0 win. Norton stays on the line, so Wilson's got to do something here. And back to the keeper it goes. Wilson, actually pretty assured touches. You don't really expect to come on late as a substitute when you're a centre-back, but Wilson's done well. Fregali's in there. Spartans keep it alive. Now Vasiliadis. There's the header from Kaparazov. And Vasiliadis again. Now Walker. Good tackle. And now there's the room for Crofts. And Crofts towards Gentle. Crofts continues the run and gets it back. Ashley Crofts. It's a tight angle. And now she might... It was, she was heading that way, so she thinks might as well keep it by the corner flag. And you think Apia might be in full game management mode now. Now Panagopoulos cutting inside and broken up by Mkali. Apia wanted a free kick, which they will not get. Now Kaparazov has got to turn on the afterburners, and she's quick enough to prevent McKenzie having a play at it. And deep into stoppage time now, and of course, no fourth official means we don't know how much more time Eric Saab is going to add. Spartan's still alive, only just. <sighs> there we go on. And now into the middle, there's Kilbride. The clearance. Almost now or never for Spartans. Now Panagopoulos has to defend. That's a well timed tackle. Panagopoulos assesses her options. Now outside of the foot pass, and it'll make its way to Lancaster. What a ball. Here's Lancaster. Low and saved by Norton. She'll pick up the scraps. And there can't be much time left. Uh, Young just decides get it away, get it away from our goal as far away as possible. Oh, Spartans, they don't need it in this part of the field. They've got to hurry. It's been over three minutes of time added on by my stopwatch. Crofts just throwing herself at it to break up the latest Spartans attack. Now that's Ford. No Spartans in the area though. And Young, well, that's intercepted, and Young needs to defend again, which he does well, very well. Now Walker, and Walker, I think, well, that's pretty much all that's required. Harpy don't need to score, they just need to not concede. Now, a very late sub, just to help slow the momentum a little bit more, and Ashley Crofts, no goal, but... And a deserved round of applause for how hard she's worked today. And I think that's going to be Imogen Lane replacing her. Yeah, that looks like Imogen Lane, a player who's just joined RPI Leichhardt after uh, experiencing a good deal of success with Hills United. Imogen Lane, she helped, she helped Hills United to two women's first grade finals in their first two years as a women's first grade outfit. 
and that was in League One Women's. Uh, Imogen Lane, and part of the, was rewarded for her performances by joining the defending NPL Women's New South Wales Premiers and inaugural Sapphire Cup winners. Now Lane, and couldn't keep it in play, but we go on, but surely there can't be much longer. One eye on Eric Saba to see when he starts glancing at his watch. But there have been a few injury stoppages, to be fair, but there's no more time. Apia Leichhardt have held on, and it will be a win. Their third win in five games. Their undefeated streak now stands at five games. Apia Leichhardt have taken the three points tonight because of a spectacular goal from Giselle Pepino in the first half. That secured all three points for Brad Attard's side. Just quickly a plug for the NPL Women's New South Wales streams coming up next week. Uh, so all seven games on Sunday, the 21st. So at 4.40 p.m., it's Bulls FC Academy versus Illawarra Stingrays, called by Annabelle Banfield at 4.45 p.m. in seven days' time. Uh, the game I like to call the Battle of the Kids, Football New South Wales Institute versus Emerging Jets, called by Dave McDonald. Then on Sunday, the 21st, four 5 p.m. kickoffs, Manly United versus Sydney Olympic, MacArthur Rams versus Blacktown Spartans, Sydney University versus RPL Leichhardt, and University of New South Wales versus Northwest Sydney Spirit called by Will Constantinidis. And then at 5.10 p.m. on the 21st, Gladewell Ravens versus Northern Tigers called by the Serbian Mark Tyler, Nikola Pozda. That's the match of the round. There's also, I'll be calling the League One Women's Match of the Round next week from Landon Stadium. It's a derby, Blacktown City versus Hills United, 4 p.m. Sunday the 21st. So that's the upcoming women's streams for you on the Football News FL's YouTube page. There's also a game Wednesday, 8 p.m., Illawarra Stingrays versus Gladesville Ravens from Sir Ian McLennan Oval. But for now, this is Eric Subihano signing off. Thanks for joining us on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage and we hope to we hope to be joined by you soon on another Football New South Wales stream. The final score from Blacktown Football Park is a Blacktown Spartans nil, RPL Leichhardt 1.